My name is Britta Jürgens from Berlin. My name is Matthew Griffin. Can you describe your profession, what you do? We are both architects working together since 27 years uh, in our um, architecture office called Deadline Architects in Berlin. What does it mean to be an architect? What do you do? I mean, we know who you are. You said that you run a studio, that you are an architect, but what does it include? What do you do on a daily basis? Uh, how do you run your studio and how do you find yourself are, as architects? What defines your job according to you? Well, our office is not a traditional architect's office. We have the privilege of being able to define what we believe architecture to be. And this is in the widest sense about creating cities and the spaces in these cities. And we're very interested in all the components that go together to make a city. If it be the use that people use a space for or the way a space looks or the things around the space. And our focus is in the end on building beautiful buildings. But if a bu building is beautiful and does not have a beautiful use to go with it, then it doesn't really make much sense. And so we want to see what can we contribute to make the city a more lively, interesting place. And we incorporate things that are traditionally not part of the role of, of an architect, like uh, we've become developers and uh, we work uh, intensively with uh, political activism to create the kind of uh, framework in which we can build a building. Where do you find clients? Because you said that you deal with the cities, so it means that cities should be your clients. How do you find your clients? 27 years is a long time uh, running a studio, so it means that you needed to have a lot of clients in order to be an established studio, first of all, then to sustain yourself. And how do you find clients or are you at the point of your career that clients find you? Well, I think we're in that respect very unusual. We're, we've been working together for 27 years, but only produced uh, two outstanding buildings, I, I'd like to say. I think it's true. And uh, one low income uh, change uh, of an old building. And uh, we sustain ourselves not just with architecture work, but we also run a little hotel. Uh, so we are able to be free in the themes that really interest us, which is architecture and urban planning, to do what we think is important. And I think that we have always been independent of make, having to make money with, with uh, our architectural studio. Uh, made it, that was what made it possible that we could do all this political activism at the side. And uh, that basically led to this last project we did, which now is um, uh, looked upon as an example of how things can be done different in a city. And um, yeah, in that way, I think we were unusual. And basically for this last project, the clients um, found us. Um, yeah. This is something uh, really important, what you've said, uh, that you don't sustain yourself uh, from pure architecture from running the architecture studio and this is both comfortable and uncomfortable situation because you need to look for an income from other sides than architecture on the other hand you have time and space in your minds to uh, be interested only in the projects that you are interested in and that, that you are you want to explore was it your conscious decision i mean when you started you were thinking that we will be doing something else to make money simply and we will focus on something else to make our architecture more thoughtful more uh, responsible more engaged yes it was a con conscious de decision right from the beginning we uh, have always uh, separated our enterprises uh, that uh, produce um, money and our enterprises to produce content at the beginning, we had an office for architectural services which we, with which we measured buildings and drew them for other architects who were renovating the buildings. And we could work in a very focused way for a few weeks to earn money. We had a lot of people working for us and then everyone would go on holiday and do whatever else they were, wanted to do. And at the time, we ran a, a gallery called Urban Issue and uh, this was uh, the content focus and so now that's transformed we have a, a hotel which uh, is generating most of the economic uh, structure behind our lives and then we have the architecture office which has to function economically but it doesn't have to produce as much as if we didn't have these other enterprises 
Where do you look for inspirations in your work? Oh, that's a difficult question. I'd say everywhere, to tell you the truth. Um, I, and I think I can speak for Matthew as well, we hardly ever read architecture books or um, architecture magazines, and we just keep our eyes open and uh, look in all sorts of other fields for inspiration because I think we've been trained as architects and we feel confident that we know our job very well. And um, so we, we don't need to see that much what other people are doing, but we want to see what is present at that moment generally in the world. And we try to take it from there. I might add a few things to that. One of the things that we find very inspirational is traveling, visiting places and buildings to try and figure out what makes these spaces uh, tick. Uh, and, you know, we, we carry a measuring tape around and we might measure the size of a table or something like that to just to try and understand what, it works. how it works in, in the details. And, um, and then also we take a lot of inspiration from our community. Like we're part of a, a larger community where there's all sorts of interesting things going on. And, and uh, we're very interested in this question of how do you create a community in dialogue with all the people involved. Uh, what is the greatest hardship uh, you face in your work as an architect? Um, well, I think that one thing you have to understand if you're considering becoming an architect is that 95% of everything you do every day is, is a real drag. And uh, there is very little actually inspiring work. But if you, in the end you do succeed, you create something very inspirational, but it's composed of all these endless hours of, of uh, drudgery. And um, as long as you keep your focus on, on where you're going and what your goals are, then that's all bearable. Yeah. Is there any highlight, any hope for people who would like to become architects? Because, you know, 95% of time being a drudgery, it, it sounds a little bit scary. Is there anything that you can say about your work that is, is bright? Well, every day we see the buildings we build. Because actually in the one building we have our office and we're in the hotel and now this other project we also run another little hotel and a cafe and all the people, it's a co-op uh, there and we see how, how they all love that building, building and the guests in our hotel every day we get, uh, we get feedback yeah. and they're all so happy and they're all inspired by the work and, and these buildings we build them especially in a way that they will really last basically forever. <laughs> <laughs> they can't, uh, you know, the materials are chosen in a way that they will still look good in, when we're dead a long time. And so this is very rewarding every day, you know, every day we st I still don't think it's boring, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we're very grateful that we are actually in the situation that we can enjoy the buildings ourselves and be in touch with the all these other people who are enjoying the building. And um, that's super rewarding. Yeah, it's worth the drudgery, definitely. I think also there's nothing more amazing than seeing something materialize that you've been working on for so many years and so many corners that you put into all this thought and you see it, it comes together and it looks beautiful. And often, you know, you've, you've thought about spaces, you've made models of them, you've done drawings of them, but you never know what they're going to be like until they're actually there. And it's just an incredible thing to see this thing slowly materialize. To get instant feedback, yeah, on yeah. what you've done, uh, just to be uh, revised by people who use it, because sometimes you are not able to review your project yourself. You just get the feedback from other people that may be uh, objective, but then you, being in the place that you've built and uh, functioning there, you can develop yourself with the feedback you get from other people. Can you imagine yourself being someone else than you are now professionally, if you were not? deadline architects, if you were not architects yourself separately, what would you do? What would be your profession, your job? Well, the older I get, um, I think everybody keeps asking themselves these questions. And I used to ask these questions myself, uh, you know, but the older I get, the more I see that we are, have exa done exactly what we were made to do. Not only that we wanted to do it, but it seemed all, almost as if we had to do it. 
And I think everybody should just look at this thing inside of them, what they're made for, you know, not what they want, but, really you know, it and seems like, the yeah. From a very range of people that I get that I, I am who I wanted to be, that, that nobody speculates on how, you know, what, what else would I be. So this is really uh, striking. Yeah. Thank you. People don't normally say that. Uh, no, they usually, you know, they usually have a different perspective and thinking, oh, if I would not, if I'm not an architect, then I would be, you know, musician, uh, engineer, then I would run something. So, yeah, that's that's yeah, something amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and you? Yeah, basically, it's the same thing for me. I can't really imagine being someone, being else. someone else. No. If you had met yourself 27 years ago, what advice would you give to yourself? Keep going and believe in yourself. Yeah. Okay, this is a cliche. Okay, <laughs> a nice, you know, a nice piece of advice that someone can actually use. Well, I don't know. Looking back, maybe, maybe even, even more trust this, this little voice inside you that you know tells you to go somewhere where it's scary. But to still go there, you know, to to yeah, to even to to to, to, to yeah, to, I mean, we've been bold. I think looking back, we've done it. But uh, there was at points a lot of fear involved. And looking back, I can say all this fear was just such a waste of energy because somehow you 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 guided you 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 guided to towards something, and then might as well just walk there without fear and just do it and uh, save yourself a lot of drama and energy, yeah. I might add that that life is made up of all sorts of little decisions. You sort of think, okay, there's some big decisions which I have to make, but actually every single little decision you make is a part of who you become and who you are. And so if you are sort of true to yourself when you make the little decisions, then the big decisions will happen automatically.